Can you see all the gray? Yeah, a little bit gray on the sides. Are you getting that or no? I'm not far behind you. I feel like I'm going to – I don't have it yet, but I got another kiddo coming in September, so <laughs> I'll probably, probably be getting there. My buddies always do it when they see me with it. Their first comment is, so much gray. And I'm like, you couldn't say anything. That's what that's what your buddies got to do, though. Like, they, oh, they yeah, just yeah. got to dig at you before – yeah. Yeah. Lots to celebrate. You mentioned the kid coming in September. Your Your daughter is actually – a couple months younger than my daughter. So I'm stoked that you got another one on the way, a little boy coming. Yeah. Yeah. Little boy, early September. So yeah. So uh, there will be, yeah, right at about two years, uh, age difference. So how are the nerves? Are you starting to freak out yet? Or are you keeping things nice and calm? No, nah, man, I'm good. You know, I'm, I'm excited. Uh, you know, probably as we get a little closer, I'll probably start feeling some butterflies but uh for now man I'm, I'm excited and everything is going smooth i'm just just hoping for a healthy baby healthy mama and your daughter is eloise right eloise yeah, yeah does she does she get it have you tried to explain the concept to her that a little baby's coming i don't think so we've tried you know we're we're reading like this book every night that's called like i'm gonna be a big sister uh but she doesn't care about it she just she's ready to go play with something else uh so it may just be a, we'll cross that bridge when we get there. <laughs> are, are, is your daughter really into books? I feel like I read about 97 books a day and there's one she loves most. Is there one book that you've read a thousand times at this point? Yeah. And it's the stupidest book I've ever read in my life. Uh, sorry if the person that wrote this is, is listening. <laughs> I apologize. But it's called Dragons Love Tacos. That's I've that's never her, heard of that one. That's her favorite book. She wants to read it every single night and... Uh, and if, if they are listening, congratulations, because you've probably sold 2 million copies and you're probably on some island in the Caribbean, but man, that book is goofy as all get out. And you're probably going to bed at night and instead of song lyrics of things going through your head, it's that in your head. And you're like, are you kidding me? Dragon's yeah. on taco. Get out of here already. You can't get it out. <laughs> like, that is, God, they're just the most obscene stories that i'm like how did who, who even thought about this like is there what about a song in a musical family is there a song she's really into that you have to hear all the time like i'm i'm singing wheels on the bus approximately 57 times a day no oh, gosh uh you know the good thing with eloise is we've just because we've always had uh you know music playing in the house she gravitates towards like you know, bands that we listen to. And it's crazy. She loves a song from a singer songwriter named Jim Croce uh, called Speedball Tucker. That's like one of her favorite songs. And then she also likes my music. So she, she listens to detours and that's her favorite song from, from dad. That, that's who you run new music by now. You're like, let's see if Eloise is up to it. And, and we'll see if, if it's a go from her, we're good. She's a great, she's a great song critic. Yep. Do you have a name picked out for baby two? Was it easier to find Eloise's name for you and your wife to agree on? Or was baby two's name easier? So I'm pretty sure that Eloise was like, that was like from day one, the day we found out we were pregnant. There was no change in my wife's like locked in on Eloise. Like that was it. If it was a girl, this one, now that's a boy, we know is because we didn't know what Eloise was. We waited to find out. Uh, I, we haven't really discussed much i know <laughs> she has she has two names that she really likes i haven't thought twice about it which is terrible uh so we haven't we haven't really got to the topic yet on this one all i'm saying is you're an lsu tigers guy joe burrow joe's not a bad name for a boy's name that's my grandpa's name uh so it may be i'm his name may be joe burrow davis if i'm not uh Speaking of dads and grandpas, I feel like Hard Dirt, the song, and, and let alone the album, but the song itself is such a dad, not just saying, but a piece of advice. You know what I mean? Listening to the song, it's like, that's something you could hear a dad or a grandpa or a mom or a grandma passing down to you. Like, hey, there's all these things that you can do, but the one thing that you really need to is to build a family and buy dirt. And it's just, it's just beautiful. Thank you very much. And yeah, that's, a you know, that first verse, uh, I wrote that song, my brother Jacob and uh, Josh Jenkins and Matt Jenkins and you know, that first verse was kind of channeling my, my grandpa's, you know, that was their, that was their advice to me and Jake, you know, it's, uh, don't get too caught up in, in money and, and the size of, of the house that you have, 
focus more on, on what's inside that house and, and what you're doing to, to make those memories and, and surround it with people you love and make sure all that's always taken care of and everything else will work out. If you take care of that one thing. Is that something that, cause my friends all did things in different ways and maybe your circle did too. There's people that bought cars. There's people that went on trips. Is that something that you first focused on when you got a little bit of money is like, I need to buy my own land. I need to have some sort of property in my name. Yeah. I mean, we're looking now, um, you know, mainly because we're still in the same house. We, we moved into when we, we first moved to Nashville and we've just outgrown it now, you know, especially come September, we are, we are going to be out of rooms. Uh, so, you know, we're, we are, we're looking like actively looking to buy dirt, um, you know, and, and build the house that, that we hope to raise our family in and, uh, and that our kids can always remember as home. Uh, so yeah, that's something I'm, I'm, I'm doing as we speak. I was looking this morning, to be honest with you. <laughs> is, there, is there like land that you have an eye on or, and are you the kind of handy person that can actually help build things? Or are you like me and you just would rather see other people do what they're skilled in? Oh no, there's going to be somebody else that builds a house. Cause I want to, <laughs> but uh, yeah, you know, I've, I've, I'm pretty active in the search. Uh, but uh, I think I have a lofty, Every time I find a place I like, I look at it. I'm like, oh gosh, I need to write a lot more songs before that becomes <laughs> realistic. <laughs> or you just you, you try and do it yourself. You become Ryan Gosling in uh, in the Notebook. In the Notebook, and you got the beard, and you got your shirt off, and you're building the house, and that's just yep. that's your new look. You got the I, beard. I, can, I I'm already halfway there. So yeah. <laughs> How do you get Luke Bryan on the song? Is he somebody that you have in your phone and you have a, a relationship enough where you can just text him or is that a label thing or what, yeah, how does that work? I, I actually did. I texted him the song, uh, you know, and I was, I knew it was a song that Luke was going to be able to resonate with. You know, I, I know, I'm, I know Luke well enough to know that that song is what he's about, you know, and I just, you know, was nervous about, you know, I never want to put anybody in a situation where they, whether it's like you don't like the song or, you know, Luke's a busy dude, you know, I mean, he's running wide open and, you know, it takes a lot of time to record songs and get them right. And, um, but yeah, man, I sent him, sent him the song in a text, told him how much it meant to me and, and that I would love for him to be a part of it. And, uh, and, and he did, man, he, he got back to me and, and really took this song to the next level. In the minutes that you're waiting for a text back, are you searching at your phone like after a first date and you, or after you send a risky text and you're just staring at it like waiting for the bubbles to pop up or do you leave your phone alone and pretend nothing's happening or what do you do? You no, know, it's funny. I, uh, I actually text an, a, a very close friend of mine and I, I told her, hey, this may be really dumb, but I just text Luke Bryan by dirt and she works at my label and uh and she just sends me a message back she's like you did what i was like i sent luke by dirt and i asked him to sing on it and she was like has he messaged you back yet and i was like no and i said that i was like i feel like i just text like the hot chicken class and i'm like <laughs> waiting for her to text me back and i'm just like staring at my phone you know uh to where finally i was like dude put the phone down quit worrying about it and uh you know, and he did, you I mean, he, he texted me back not long after that. And, and when he told me he was in on it, man, it was, I, I did some celebrating. Is there somebody in your phone, you got Luke, is there somebody in your phone that you have, but have never reached out to? It's one of those things you meet in an event, take my number, but you have it. And you're like, I don't know if I'll ever have the guts to, to message this person or, or do <laughs> anything with this number. Yeah. Uh, God, I don't know. Um, trying to think man i was i was pretty shocked one day i looked down and uh Peyton manning had sent me a text message uh I, I went to his football camp when i was a kid and and you know just through mutual friends he had found out that i was a camper there and um man i answered the phone one day it was from you know a number i didn't know and i answered the phone and it was like hey i'm Peyton manning and I was like, oh, my God, this is Peyton Manning. <laughs> I would so have that's that, who my daughter's named after. No way. 
Yeah. Is it really? Dude, that's Freak crazy. Out right now. That's my dream. Dude, he called me one day, uh, and I talked to him for like 10 minutes, man. Nicest guy in the world. And I'm, you know, I'm from Louisiana. So, like, the Manning family is like royalty to me. So, like, it was really cool just to get to tell Peyton, you know, how much, you know, Cooper, Archie, Eli, Peyton, how much we looked up to him growing up and how much we still look up to just the way the Manning family handle, handles everything. Um, so, man, it, it was pure class through and through. Yeah, it was special to get to just kind of chat with him for a little bit. I got to let you go, but I know you got the live stream tomorrow night at 7 from the exit, and I can't wait to get uh, catch part in that. The whole EP is fantastic. If I can sneak one more in, I just want to know where in public do you split your pants? Uh, softball game. I was playing a rec softball game, and uh, I – you know, got 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 down and get ready for a ground ball, and there she went, straight up, straight up the right cheek, man. <laughs> you keep playing, or are you done? Oh no, man, you push through that. You, 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 <laughs> I, I was good to go, man. I was like, well, it's all good. I had some, I had some sliding shorts on, so we were good. <laughs> I love it. Thanks so much for the time. All the best to you and the growing family, and uh, thanks so much for the great album and the great new song. Awesome, I appreciate it, Greg. Thank you, man. See you, brother.